The T2 Tile project is building an indefinitely scalable computational stack. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. All right, uh, it's the last day of the 2010s decade. <laughs> our top stories this week. Uh, uh, so last week I posted one of these uh, cartoons, the Strange Planet things, uh, uh, and uh, look what I got for Christmas. <laughs> so that was nice. Uh, um, just that. Best effort. Uh, It's not something that I can just start up and stop. I mean, I have it in my head a lot, uh, and I have done some background work on the character plotting and stuff like that, but it's not very much turning into word count. So last time we saw it, it was this. The, since uh, the end of November, the word count was 347 words per week, which a target was 2,000. As of now, it's 399 words per week, but that's mostly because the fit line has just changed because of the time passing, not because there's many more words gonna have to block out a chunk of time not to imagine this can be sort of interdone on a sort of daily basis it seems uh, uh, we shall see there, there's it feels increasingly important to me uh, uh, the story that uh, telling there and the uh, vision of the way computing might work in the future and so forth so we'll see gonna have to make time but again, for the as it has been for the month of December, it's it's all been about the software. Uh, um, at, at, at this point, it was taking enough work to deal with all of this that I was like, if I was going to do it, if I was going to go from an ancient uh, Linux version from 2017 to a modern one, uh, um, so I was going to 4.14. Uh, there's all these different choices. There's the IoT uh, snapshots, the various. Uh, where is it here? There's also the console snapshot. So these are different images. They're all Linux distributions, but some of them have a lot more stuff in it to make it easier to use, and some of them are super minimal. So the console snapshot is the super minimal one, which will be the normal place that I would think to start from, so you just add stuff that you want on top of that. But as I was trying to deal with it, there was stuff missing that I couldn't figure out how to add. It was very frustrating. In addition, after taking all this work to go to 4.14, there's 4.19 was already available. Available again in IoT, Internet of Things, my my nightmare security horror show, and also in the console snapshot. So this past week I tried all of these. Uh, I tried to settle on going to 4.19. I mean, there's this inherent conflict between trying to build on top of something new, which is a big mistake that I learned all the way back in the 80s when I was looking at grad students. When I was a young grad student, I was looking at senior grad students. They were trying to write software theses on top of experimental hardware, early parallel hardware that was being made back then. And they were getting completely screwed because the hardware wasn't working, so they couldn't do their theses. Uh, uh, so what I learned from that is don't build on top of experimental stuff. The flip side of it is, if you're not using the bleeding edge stuff, nobody wants to support you. If you say, oh, I have this bug, and you say, what are you running? You say 4.14, they say, oh, try it again in 4.19. So I'm going to take all of this effort to bring all the code up. I was going to bring it up to 4.19. That's what I've been standardizing on. It's got a lot of stuff that's the same as the 4.14 stuff that I already dealt with, but it has its own crazy new stuff as well. Uh, um, I tried to use the console, I couldn't get it to work, so I ended up going back to the IoT things. Now, the IoT in the 4.19 snapshots essentially fills the 4 gigabyte drive that comes on the Beagle Bones. And so there's no space, almost, for your own stuff. And the instant I started installing MFM and all of my own sort of packages, I ran out of disk. So there's a, I have a whole section in my installation process where it's just about what packages that are part of the IoT just distribution that are built into the image by default can I get rid of. Don't need bone script, don't need cloud nine, don't need RF kill, there is no <laughs> wireless on the thing, and so forth. So that has now, well I mean I've had that for a while, but now I've tried to get it more uh, more packages in there. And I need, in the latest 4.19s, I needed to do this package removal way early before I tried to do anything else, or, or else I'd run out of disk just trying to update the packages and see what the latest versions of things are so 
Yeah, right. And I tried to use the console image because it just feels so much more right. Start with the minimal thing and add, but there's a bunch of stuff I couldn't find in a package. Anyway, so I went back to the IoT and then started throwing things away. Uh, uh, and all right. Uh, yeah. I don't have time to rant properly about the device tree. It's this the whole idea of how you're sort of supposed to be describing hardware to the Linux software, so that Linux knows how many you uh, are, you know, serial ports you have, how many parallel ports, how many USB things, and so forth to it. Uh, <coughs> there's a whole page, device tree mysteries, which makes sense because it really is mysterious. And really, what it is is it's an illusion that you should be able to describe the hardware with out looking at the source code of the software but it's not true that the stuff that ends up that you write in this device tree which seems like it's standardized is really just very uniquely plugged into exactly what the drivers decide the names they're looking for and you and it's a little bit standardized and it pretends to be standardized it's just enough to pull you in very frustrating i spent a tremendous amount of time on it um enough so i was saying i'm i'm not going to get this thing working i mean where it's called cut to the chase where it currently stands i've got uh mfm running on these things again but i have that true last week as well but uh i don't have the touch screen working and that was something that was a big fight that i had two years ago to get the touch screen working and i got it working and there was a specific trick that i was missing back then i've got that now and that somehow doesn't seem to be help so i'm working that as well but at this point I was just saying look let's just make things better however we can and call that progress rather than saying it's got to be this or whatever it happens to be so one of the things I tried to make better was how long it took to boot and this whole I've ranted about system D I ranted about it last week and one of the things that's supposed to be good about it is that it, it'll tell you where all the time went to spent a minute setting up the hard drive well that was probably because it must have been reformatting uh, file system checking uh, finding errors or something from an unclean set uh, unclean shutdown the previous time I don't even know uh, uh, and so forth all of this time used in various things and now I was also running into the case where the the system D setup would sometimes fail just like I was having back in the old 2017 stuff where something would go wrong and everything would lock up and it, I wouldn't know why it would happen sometimes and this was the thing. When it would fail, it would say, do system status blah, 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 for more information. And I would try to do system control status blah, 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 for more information, and it would crash. The <laughs> You know, so instead of just being able to look in files and see whatever it was, was using my eyeballs plus sunlight, I was supposed to use the system control program, which I couldn't because it didn't work. Same thing with this journal control program. It was supposed to work, but it didn't work. All of that finally, finally, finally led me to, well, it led me to a bunch of things. Uh, one of which was the, so DTB is the device tree base or something like that. Uh, and it wasn't picking up mine. I was saying, I want to use the bone green for the big bone green T212. That's for the T2 tiles. But, but, but you're down here switching to, uh, uh, you bone black you i didn't know why i was switching to that i got that fixed things started working a little bit better but um uh, all of these the internet of things things starts up all of these incredibly complicated services that take a ton of time i was trying to figure out why do i need them why do i need ttygs0 i don't even know what ttygs0 is uh, uh it's a gadget serial thing oh that's if you're plugging stuff in by usb and you want to do networking or talk to the console via usb T2s aren't using the USB port. The USB port is hidden behind the West Intertile connector, I think. So I wanted to get rid of it. So disable that service and so forth. Gradually starting to working on speeding up the thing. And what I found out, what I saw was that one of the times when it failed, it failed right after I had it, one of the modules, the kernel modules that I had asked to install with my parameters had gotten installed. Then things started messing up. And it was this CMMK. 
which is a module that allows you to reserve a certain chunk of memory and tell Linux not to mess with it. And I was using that from experiments long ago, not currently using it, but it was still part of the boot process, and it started to seem like maybe the parameters I was giving you were somehow wrong, and it was causing the boot process to screw up like at random, like depending on where in memory programs got set up or something like that. I don't know. I got rid of CMMK. The module no longer gets loaded. And fingers crossed, I haven't seen a systemd boot failure since. I don't believe that's the only failure that's involved, but my entire power zone, I powered it up, it all came up. All 16 of them came up. They took a lot of different times because they had own little issues, but they all came up. Make things better. One of the things that I realized <laughs> from disassembling the power zone, taking the cases off, reflashing all of them with the 4.19 new image that I made using all this new script technology that I've developed over the last week or two, is that, wow, it's a pain in the butt to take all these cases off. Uh, uh, so let me show you how much of a pain it is. So I, I use that little wrench I made. Take them off. All right, now it's off. Now I'm going to put them back on. And... Put each one into it. the wrench, use the wrench, put it on, four feet off, four feet on. Uh, uh, overall, two and a half minutes. Uh, and, okay, that was based on this wrench. Now, this wrench was all about uh, one of these guys, uh, uh, because once I made the back cover, once the back cover was on the... Uh, plate, the feet, there was not a cl enough clearance to get the old wrench back in, the wrench that I made that actually looks like a wrench, uh, uh, doesn't really go in very well, so I made this special little corner grabber, and that's what you saw in the video. But, you know, it works, but it was a huge pain in the butt, and it was like, couldn't we make things better? Uh, um, so I made this. I, I made a frame that's got four of the wrenches already positioned in the right places. Uh, that, uh, that took some fussing around, but eventually I got the thing set up right, and the result is now it looks like this. The, the speed frame now grabs all of them at once. We already got it off. We don't have to put the feet on because the feet get held by uh, the frame. All right, a minute and a half instead of two minutes and 20 seconds, something like that. And this is actually fun. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> is that right? So I printed up some. And, you know, this I actually enjoy sticking on the back <laughs> of uh, uh, tiles and going zip, 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 taking them off. It's nice. Uh, uh, all right. So... Possibly we've gotten system detamed a little bit. We hope to get the thing running faster, boot running faster as well. Why? Because make things better. Don't try to solve the whole problem. Just make things better. This is a lesson for the whole best effort computing that, of course, I have to keep learning for myself over and over again. All right. There's eight weeks between now and when the ALIFE 2020 scientific paper submission dates uh, are, have to be submitted. That time is going to go in a flash. Uh, I really hope that we can get past the main uh, upgrade Linux upgrade issues this coming week. We'll see how it goes. At this point, who knows? <sighs> Happy New Year. Welcome to the 2020s, and I hope to see you next week.